Hey everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. A few days ago, I put a poll out on my YouTube channel asking what people would want to see more of. And it was no surprise that people want to see more of Ubiquity. The two runner ups to that was PFSense and Synology. So we're going to do some videos on both. In this video, we're going to talk about creating VLANs within PFSense and then creating them within our Ubiquity environment. We'll also take a look at a few ways that we could secure our VLANs. In future videos, we're gonna look at PFSense firewall rules and using Synology Surveillance Station. I'm gonna also show you how to securely view your cameras when you're remote using WireGuard through PFSense. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find me on Twitter at MacTelecomN. And if you'd like to support the channel, we have affiliate links, which I do have a new Ubiquity affiliate link, and I'll put that down in the description below. So to start off, let's take a look at some of the equipment that we're using. So we have my internet ISP connection coming into my NetGate 6100. From there, we have one physical cable going from the LAN port to my Unify Enterprise 8 PoE. We're going to be creating four separate VLANs. Our default native VLAN is 10.10.10.1 slash 24. We have a guest, an IoT, a camera, and then a voice VLAN. All these networks will be going down one physical port. I may do another video showing you how to lag some of these ports together if people are interested in that. I also do have one Unify U6 Lite access point hanging off of the switch so that we could create some Wi-Fi networks. Now here's the dashboard for my NetGate 6100. If we look under interfaces, we could see my WAN, which is just getting a private IP address from my UDM Pro. And then we could see the LAN is already created at 10.10.10.1. I just went through the wizard and set up my ISP connection. If you need to see how to do that, I will put a link below for another video on the basic setup. So first we need to create the VLANs within our PFSense environment. So we're gonna go up to interfaces and then we're gonna go to assignments. From assignments, we're gonna click on VLANs. If we look back at our drawing, we're gonna have four different VLANs and I'm gonna use the third octet as my VLAN. So 20, 30, 40, and 50. So we'll create our guest network first. So we're gonna press the add plus icon and this is the physical interface that we're connecting to. So our parent interface IGC0, and that's my first LAN port, and it is labeled LAN. On the NetGate 6100, we do have a bunch of physical interfaces, so you need to make sure that you're configuring the proper one. We're going to give this a VLAN tag of 20, and then I'm going to give it a description of guest and then we'll press save. Next, we need to create our IoT network, and that's gonna be going through the same physical interface as we're just using the one cable connecting them. And here's a picture of what it looks like. The IoT network is on VLAN 30, and we'll give it a description of IoT. Now we need to add cameras, which is on 40. And then the last one will be VLAN 50, which will be for our voice network. Now with our VLANs created, we need to assign them to an interface. So we'll go up to interfaces and then assignments. On the bottom, we could see available network ports. If we click the drop down menu, we could see our four different VLANs. So I'll click on our guest and then we'll press add. The guest is now added. We'll add our IoT, our cameras, and then our voice. Now, all of these VLANs are showing up as OP. So OP 7, 8, 9, and 10. I'm just going to show you how to set up one of these as the steps are exactly the same for each. So I'm going to click on our guest network, which is OP 7. And I'm going to give it a description and I'll call it guest. We're going to enable this interface. The IPv4 configuration is going to be static. And then we're going to scroll down to static IPv4 configuration and give it an IP address. If we look back at the drawing, our guest network is 10.10.20.1. So that's what we're going to give it 10.10.20.1. And it's going to be a slash 24. And then we'll press save and apply changes. So we need to do that same step for the rest of our VLANs, but we're just gonna give them their own IP range. Now what we need to do, we need to set up a DHCP server for this VLAN. So we'll go to services and then we'll go to DHCP server. We can see at the top that we have our LAN and then we have our guests. So we're gonna to wanna to select our guest network and enable the DHCP server. Below it's gonna show us our subnet of 10.10.20. It's gonna show us our subnet mask and then our available range. I'm going to start the range from 10.10.20.10 to 10.10.20.200. And I'll give this subnet its own DNS of 1.1.1.1 and 9.9.9.9. And we'll press save. 
So I need to go through and do that for the other three networks. And once we're done that, we'll configure it on the Unify side. Now we have all the IP addresses defined for our VLANs and the DHCP created, we could create the VLANs within our Unify network. I'm just running this Unify controller locally on my PC, but you could run it on a cloud key on a server or a hosted server. We could see my two devices. We have my USW Enterprise 8 PoE, and then we have that U6 Lite. Now within Unify, we need to define all those VLANs. So we're gonna go to our settings wheel, and then we're gonna go to the networks. From networks, we could see the default network, which is 192.168.1.0 slash 24. This isn't even in use because we're using the PFSense as our firewall router. So I'm gonna create a new network and I'm gonna call it guest. This network type is gonna be VLAN only network. The VLAN ID for our guest network was 20, and then we add the network. So we need to do that as well for our IoT network. And the VLAN ID for IoT was 30. We need to do it for our cameras. And the VLAN ID was 40. And we need to do it for our voice network, which the VLAN ID of 50. So now we have all of our VLANs created. Let's go take a look back at our switch. Now looking at our switch, we could go to the settings and then we could see the ports that we're connected to. On port eight, we could see that that's our uplink and that's uplinking at 2.5 gigabits per second to our PFSense NetGate 6100. I'm gonna click on this port. I'm gonna give it a name of uplink to 6100 and then we're gonna press apply changes. So one thing you'll notice with the port profiles and all of the Ubiquiti devices, and this comes by default, is it's set to all. So the all profile means that it's a trunk port and any VLAN could go down it. So for security purposes, we want to define the VLANs per port. So if we look back at all eight of these ports, if say we had a camera on port two, we would go to our port two, and then we would switch the port profile to be on the camera network and then apply the changes. So whenever we plug a device into that port, it will get an IP from the camera VLAN. So the same goes for our trunk ports. We could either leave it to the all profile or we could lock it down a little bit more. And how we do that is we go over to our settings wheel and then we click on profiles. From profiles, we could see switch ports. And every time you create a new network within Unify, it will create a new switch port. So we have our camera, guest, IoT, and our voice. So let's create one for our uplink. I'm gonna create new port profile. I'm gonna call this uplink. The PoE mode, I'll just leave it at default. The native network will be our default, which is our 10.10.10.1 network. And then we're gonna to wanna to specify our tag networks. So we're gonna select all of the networks because this is for our trunk port. Now we need to assign that profile to our trunk port. So I'm gonna go back to my switch. I'm gonna click on port eight and under the port profile, I'm gonna select the uplink custom port profile that I just created and then we're gonna apply the changes. Now, if you ever create a new VLAN, you need to go back into that port profile and put that VLAN tag in there. Now we'd wanna create a custom port profile as well for our access points. We don't have any Wi-Fi networks created, but let's create a couple right now. I'm gonna go over to my settings. And then on Wi-Fi, we're gonna create a new Wi-Fi network. I'll call this guest. We'll give it a password just for now, test one, two, three, four. The network is gonna be our guest. And then we're gonna add the Wi-Fi network. And I'm gonna create one more for our IoT network. I'll give it a password to test one, two, three, four. And then we'll select the network of IoT and then we'll add the Wi-Fi network. Now, if we take a look at our access point, we could see the uplink. And this is a wired uplink to my USW Enterprise 8 PoE on port one. So on port one, the profile is currently set to all. So that means any single VLAN could go down it. Let's create a custom profile for our Wi-Fi access points. We'll go back to settings and then we'll click on profiles. From the profiles, we'll create a new port profile and I'm gonna call this Wi-Fi APs. We're gonna leave the native network to be our default and then we're gonna select our tag networks. We only have two Wi-Fi networks, our guest and our IoT. So those are the only ones that we're gonna select and then we'll press apply changes. Now we need to go back to our switch and then to port one. On port one, we need to select that custom port profile of our Wi-Fi APs and then press apply changes. Now the only VLANs that could go down that port are our guest VLAN as well as our IoT VLAN. Nothing else could go down it. Another good thing to do for security is to either create a black hole VLAN which goes nowhere or to disable the ports that you're not using. So on port three, I won't be using it. So I could go and I could disable that port. 
and press apply changes. So if there's some random data jack out there that's connected to your switch, nobody could just come up there and plug their laptop in and capture all your traffic. On port two that we switched to the camera network, I plugged in a Hike Vision camera. Let's see if it's getting a proper IP address. So I'm gonna look at my client devices and we could see here this MAC address has the IP address of 10.10.40.10 .10 .10 .10 which is our camera network. And you can see when I go to that IP address, it's bringing up my Hike Vision camera. So it is working properly and the VLAN tags that we assign to the ports is working as expected. Now, if we connect to any of these networks right now, you won't be able to reach the internet. You need to put in some basic firewall rules into PFSense to allow that. So if we go back to our PFSense and then we go to firewall and we go to rules, under our firewall rules, we have a bunch of different tabs. So we have our LAN, our WAN, and then guest IoT cameras and voice, which we created. If we look at our LAN network, it could go pretty well everywhere right now. If we look at our guest network, there are no firewall rules defined, so it wouldn't be able to reach out to the internet. So we could add a new rule and we could have it pass the interface's guest. The address family is IPv4 and the protocol we're gonna to select to any. The source is gonna be our guest network. And the destination just for the purpose of this video is gonna be set to any, but in our firewall rule video, we will define them even more for security. And then I'm going to press save. So now I'm going to disable my ethernet adapter on this computer and connect to the guest Wi-Fi network. We should get a proper IP from that subnet and be able to reach the internet. So I'm now connected to the guest Wi-Fi internet. Let's pull up a command line and do IP config. We could see that my Wi-Fi adapter is getting the IP 10.10.20.10, which is my guest network. Let's try to ping google.ca. And we could see that we're getting replies back. So that means we are connected to the internet. We still need to add a bunch of firewall rules to this setup as we're able to access every other network. So I could ping the 10.10.10.1 network, which we shouldn't be able to access from our guest network. But that's gonna be it for this video. So we know how to create VLANs within PFSense and Unify and assign them to custom port profiles. We also went over some security for our VLANs. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see for PFSense, Unify, and Synology. If you have any questions about this video, leave it in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.